Good morning and uh, welcome here this morning to, to morning prayer. I hope this finds you well in good heart and good spirits. Uh, I believe the uh, angels have been running this morning. Um, looking outside, I think it swings and roundabouts. In some ways, that it's lovely weather for running in terms of the temperature. Um, but unfortunately, I think for the, the wind, is not necessarily the easiest thing to be running against. It's okay when you've got it against you, uh, behind you, but not quite so easy when you've got it running uh, in your face. So I do hope that uh, uh, I hope that all well. As you can uh, see, we're going to be using CommonPrayer.net today. We're going to use the uh, liturgy for ordinary radicals. Um, you can either download the app, or you can, um, uh, or you can you can go to that website and you can find it. Uh, it's uh, a very sporty weekend. I switched the TV on this morning, and uh, uh, sorry, I switched the um, radio on this morning, and it was Olympics. So if you're into sport, this is a very good weekend and a very good couple of weeks and it's kind of started off with some of our own uh, with, their, with their run this morning. Uh, still chance to, to sponsor them for what they've done, uh, especially going out in a morning like this with which is definitely doesn't not been uh, it's very summery. We have services at, at uh, Stanton and Stratton tomorrow half past nine and 11 o'clock at South Marston. Uh, and, and of course we have our Facebook service on at 10 o'clock uh, on here as well. Let's just have a moment of quiet as we come before God and we lift uh, our day. Uh, perhaps the week gone past or the week to come we lift it before to, to him. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. We have this piece of music. Guide my feet. Guide my feet, Lord. Guide me. Make straight the way to your house. With that response on our hearts, let's listen to that piece of music again. Guide my feet, Lord, guide me. Make straight the way to your house. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments, that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct, that I, sh that I might keep your statutes. Guide my feet, Lord, guide me. 
make straight the way to your house. And to continue uh, to use the readings from the liturgy, uh, from the lectionary I should say. So if you wish to read the Old Testament reading today, it is Ezekiel chapter 24, 15 to the end. Ezekiel chapter 24, 15 to the end. We're going to move on to our reading from James. James chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 12. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be, be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, lure being lured and enticed by it. Then, when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And that sin, when it's fully grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. For every generous, every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfilment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore rid yourself of all sord sordidness and rank growth of and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome the meekness, the implant welcome with meekness the implanted world that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are for if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perf look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have this reflection, which I believe is about James, from Andrew Davison. The writer and lay theologian G. K. Chesterton, doesn't he? Um, he write a TV program, not a TV program. Is it Father Brown? Go back to that one. The writer and lay theologian G. K. Chesterton summed up the basis of for his faith in terms of gift. The world he wrote and his love and his life, all that he had, everything he encountered, struck him as a wonderful gift. And gifts, he went on to say, seem to imply a giver. That theme of gift and of God as a supreme giver finds unsurpassed expression in the first chapter of the letter of James. Every act, generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. James recognises God not only as the author of gifts, but also of every act of giving. That is important since the act of giving and the identity of the giver are usually what make a particular gift so precious to us. These lines from James offer a magnificent endorsement of all that is good about the world around us, goods both natural and social, human and non-human, familiar and friendly. 
We need not deny any of that as Christians or downplay them, either as gifts or acts of, or as acts of giving, as if that would make room for God or give God's glory. It is in recognizing all that as the, all that, that excuse me, it is in recognizing all that as good, as real, substantial, excellent, perfect even, that we give place and honor to God as the giver behind all gifts and all gift giving. These are true gifts, truly given by the truly good God. We have this collet. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Those words from James are really powerful. Kind of cuts to the chase quite a lot. Doesn't say temptation is something that we don't go through something that we have to endure it doesn't come from God it comes from our desire being lured and enticed by it. it comes from I guess it comes from coveting it comes from thinking that we can do shortcuts to things or um, Yeah, it comes from those those things which we know are wrong, but we're just tempted by. And of course that can lead on to sin and as James says, ultimately not literal, certainly a kind of metaphorical death. But the act of giving comes from above the father of lights it's where all the source of all goodness and righteousness and this is what we pray for this day that's the true religion care for the orphans and widows in their distress loving God and loving one another that's what sustains us As you can see we have a sporting update and uh, Alvin and Georgina 35 minutes and 53 seconds best time best time to peak obviously uh, uh, what do they call it I can't remember what they call it but peaking at the right time and uh, with the wind today that's some achievement because it's not straightforward running into wind or even running with the wind behind you it can take you a bit quicker than you might expect and tie you out ultimately so congratulations and and uh, thank you to all that gave and it's definitely not too late let's move on with this response back to commonprayer.net or to the liturgy for ordinary radicals guide my feet lord guide me Make straight the way to your house. Listen to these words from Quaker author and educator Parker Palmer. The power of a fully lived life or a truly learned mind, learned mind, is not a power to be sought or contrived. It comes only as we let go of what we possess and find ourselves possessed by a truth greater than our own it comes only as we let go of what we possess and find ourselves possessed by a truth greater than our own we come to a time of prayer and intercession where we lift the needs of the world before God so let us pray
dear Lord and Father, we give you thanks for the wondrous gifts you have bestowed upon us. We give you thanks and praise for the wonders that surround us. We give you thanks and praise for all that is good in our lives. Collectively, as communities and as a nation, as a church, but also as uh, personally. Help us to be ready to count those blessings. Help us to be ready to see them in all that we do. Help us to look out for them day by day. Help us to be people of gratitude and thanks. And Lord, help us to be a blessing to others. Bearers of your good news. Bearers of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we lift before you those uh, who uh, those places and those individuals on our hearts who are in need this day because of the effects of COVID on their nation, because of conflict, because of persecution, because of the greed of others. We pray for your righteousness and your justice to dawn in those dark places. We pray, dear Father, for Ethiopia, Afghanistan, Azerbaijan and Armenia, Ukraine, Libya, Syria, Yemen. Pray for the Holy Land. Pray for all these places that your love and your light will shine. We pray for women and men of righteousness and justice to be raised. May their voices be heard. May your peace and your wholeness come upon this whole earth, Lord. May your kingdom come. We pray for those places that are particularly ravaged by COVID. As we struggle, Lord, we have been blessed by the NHS and by public health, by all that work within those places, by modern medicine, vaccines and treatments. We pray, dear Father, that they will be fairly and justly distributed across the world. And we particularly pray for Africa at this moment, so many places really struggling to cope with what is going on because of COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift before you um, the Olympics. We give you thanks for the joy that it brings give you thanks for the competitors, how they go to compete but they also entertain and they inspire. So we pray for all of them at this time that they will be protected. 
we pray, dear Father, that it, the games will be a success and draw people together at a time when so much of the world is divided. And we lift these weeks before you. We pray that it will be a time of a rebirth, a time when actually as a globe we come together seeking a common good, to be inspired to face the challenges that we all face at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift before you those uh, our schools and colleges, universities and preschools. We pray, dear Father, that uh, we pray, dear Father, there will be places of blessing and safety and protection. And we live before you as teachers, TAs, all staff of our schools, as they come towards the summer holidays when, yes, they will continue working, but perhaps without the day-to-day -day pressures that they've been facing, that this will be a chance for them to recharge their batteries, to recuperate and ultimately prepare for the next term. So we lift before you Noel and Lisa, Nick, Gareth and Susan, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asher, Matthew and Sarah, Heather, Marie and Michael. May they and all staff of all those places of education and learning feel your presence this day. And we live before you, the young people in our lives, those growing in a very peculiar time. But Lord, I thank you for the resilience that they have shown, just being a part of a, an assembly the other day at South Marston. It was remarkable, the resilience that the young people were talking about expressing some regret of what they've missed but being thankful and feeling blessed by what they had experienced. So we lift before you all those young people in our hearts and our minds and again we name just some of them. Joden, Ethan, Aidan, Amalia, Luca, Mia, Jack, Charlie, Evie, Noah, Ruby, Nathan, Travis, Ellie, Phoebe, Callum, Anton, Kerry, Oscar, Jake, Hannah, Jacob, Lily, Emily, Grace, Talitha, and Joel. Pray they may feel your presence this day, Lord, in all that they do. And dear Father, we lift before you those, <coughs> excuse me, we lift before you, dear Father, those in need this day. those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. We pray, dear Father, that they will know your comfort and your presence, your light and your healing. We especially pray, we net, well, we lift Name some. Pray for Trudy, 
for Mark, for Addie, for William, for Pauline, for Linda and Roy, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, George, Bob, Mary, John, Mary, Jordan, Mary, Wendy, Natalie, John, Janet, Annette, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, Peter, Hazel, Shane, Tilly, Jan, Linda and her family, Chris, Oliver and his family, parents Chris and Danielle, Anna, Angela, Mary, Roger, Chris, Martina and Traudel, Martina's children, Andy, Catherine, Anne, Sarah, Nicholas, Martin, Pat, Jeff, Hilary, June, Tom, Julie, Esme, Nilva and family, Len, for Margaret's family, for Finlay, John and Val, Peter and Bridget, for Nina's family, and for Ken. May they know your healing touch and your presence this day, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We approach the final week of production at Honda, right in the middle of our community. In truth, Many of those um, fallout has already started, but it will continue. So we pray this prayer, which we've been requested to pray, an appropriate prayer for the future. Faithful God, your spirit leads us to dream of a better future for all empowering us to make it reality. We give thanks for the blessing which Honda has been to Swindon over three decades, including these difficult days. We pray for those whose dreams now lie broken and who live for the fear, for fear, live fear, who, excuse me, and who fear for their future. Breathe upon us and all who seek the well-being of this town kindling fresh dreams of deeper and richer blessing. Inspire each of us to play our part in bringing these to birth for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, we lift this day before you. We thank you for all that's happened so far. We pray for what is to happen this day, that you may guide us particularly pray for Ellis and Richard who are being married today at St Margaret's. Pray for them and their family and their families and we pray that this day will be a day where their love is celebrated and shared and we pray that their marriage might be lifelong, life affirming and life giving. So Lord, we lift up all these prayers to you, safe in the knowledge 
that you hear us when we speak to you. Lord God, our hands are open to you. Our ears are listening to you. Our eyes are watching for you. Our hearts are trying to beat with yours. Live in us and and love other live in us and love others through us today. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray you in whichever version uh, of the old, of the Lord's Prayer that you wish. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless you and God keep you and uh, I look forward to being together again soon. Hopefully Georgina and Alvina get a chance to put their feet up or maybe put them into something nice and cool to refresh them. Have a great day. See you soon.